DaVinci Resolve 18 is out now. But if you're on the free version, is there any point in upgrading? Because all of the headline features are referring to the studio version. So what's new in the free version? Well, in this video, I'm going to whiz you through all of the small little improvements that Blackmagic have made to the free version of DaVinci Resolve for version 18. But before we do, I just need to let you know that this video is sponsored by our friends at Squarespace. Now, as mentioned, a fair amount of the big headline features for DaVinci Resolve are limited to the paid studio version, but the free version does get a handful of goodies and some real quality of life improvements as well. So let's run through them, shall we? Now, one of the big headline features is the introduction of this Blackmagic Cloud collaboration features, which allow you to work collaboratively in DaVinci Resolve with anyone in the world. It's a great new headline feature, which in today's world of remote working really does help to set DaVinci Resolve apart from the rest. It is free. Some of the cloud features aren't available to everyone just yet, but they're making their way through adding new countries, new regions to that list. So eventually it will be available basically for everyone. Now, I haven't actually dug into it that much as of yet. I do plan to, but I haven't just yet. So if you want to see the entire process, check out this video by Creative Video Tips, who talks you through the whole process from start to finish. Next up, we've got the inclusion of the Blackmagic Proxy Generator, which again is available for both the free and studio users. Now, previously working with proxies in DaVinci Resolve was a bit of a faff. It was a faff to generate them. You didn't know where they were. It just wasn't the best experience in the world. And the new proxy generator just helps to streamline the entire process. It's an external app, so you can open it outside of DaVinci Resolve. You point it to the folder you want, you select your format, and then you just leave it to run. It'll automatically create the proxies for you, put them in a source folder of your original folder, so then they'll be there ready to edit when you're in DaVinci Resolve. And you know exactly where they are, so if you need to remove them, you can just go and delete the folder. When you eventually do hop into DaVinci Resolve, it's super quick, easy, and simple to swap and change between the proxies and the original files. You simply click on playback, go to proxy handling, and then you can disable all proxies, prefer proxies, or prefer camera originals. Simple, it's a massively improved workflow. Next up, we've got some of the general improvements to the edit page functionality, and there's a few goodies in here. The first one, edit index now shows clip duration. You may never have used the edit index before, but it's actually quite useful. So I'm on the edit page in Resolve. If I click on edit index, it's up here in the top left hand corner, I get this list. Now basically, this is a list of everything that's currently on my timeline. So if I move my playhead, you can see it's skipping around, or I can just give them a click in the index and my playhead will move to that location on the timeline. Now for each of the clips, you get a bunch of handy information. So I've got things like record in, out, I've got the name. If I right click on the column headings, I can add all sorts of additional stuff like source, codex, FPS, resolution, that sort of thing. What's been added is this record duration. So straight away, I can see that this video file is 19 seconds and 20 frames in length. Now, another handy thing you can do with the edit index, you can of course search for clips by just clicking on the little magnifying glass and you can filter by all sorts of handy things. Or if you just click the three little dots, you can use all of these default filters. So if I wanted to just see all of the clips on my timeline, for example, that have transform effects, I can just give that a click. It will show me the list here. And if I give those a click, I can jump straight to the clips in question. Next up, we've got some improvements to the subtitles on the edit page. Again, this is not something I use a huge amount, so I won't show you the ins and outs, but they've got things like support for timed text, TTML, XMLs, and embedded subtitles, ability to view and import subtitles from media storage, support for relinking subtitle clips. There's loads of stuff in there. They've made some quite big improvements to the way that subtitles work on the edit page. Next up, we've got support for live previews when using the text plus color picker. This is probably one of those things you never lost sleep over, but it was quite annoying if you realized it wasn't there. If I grab a text plus, put it on my timeline, give it a click, in the inspector, I can now go to color. And as I change the color, you can see it's updating live within the preview window. It's not a big thing, but it is much handier to be able to see it updating rather than having to pick the color, click on OK, review it, go back into the color. The same thing can be said for the fonts. They all just work via the preview, as you'd expect on the text plus. There's now support for reversing shape, iris and wipe transitions on the edit page. 
Again, not a major thing, but it just gives you a little bit more flexibility if you're working with transitions on the edit page. If I grab any one of those transitions in question, let's say this diamond iris, pop it on this edit point, by default, it's gonna play that way. But if I give it a click, I've now got the option to reverse it, tick that box, and it's just gonna play it the other way instead. Again, just gives you a few more options. We now have support for showing up to 25 simultaneous multicam angles in the viewer. Pretty niche, I don't know many people that are using 25 angles in multicam, but it's handy that it's there. We've got support for setting current project settings as default. Now this was available in older versions, it was just a little bit fiddlier. Now it's much, much easier. Within any project, click on the cog, bottom right hand corner to open up your project settings. Change your timeline resolution, your frame rate, all that sort of stuff to whatever you want it to be as the default. And then simply click the three little dots top right hand corner and you set the current settings as the default preset. Whenever you jump into DaVinci Resolve, these will be the settings which will automatically load into that default settings. Simple. Drag and drop project archives to project manager to restore. This again might be a bit niche, but it's something that I will benefit from. So project archive files you can generate from within DaVinci Resolve and it will basically export the entire project. That's the project itself, the timeline, the effects, all that sort of stuff. The actual media files that will create a copy of them and the cache if you really want it. Now previously what you'd have to do, I'd have to open up my project manager, right click, restore the project archive and then go and search for it manually. Instead, what we can simply do now is drag the project archive file onto here, drop, and it will automatically restore the project. Just makes life a little bit easier. And now a real quick message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. In today's world, pretty much everyone needs a website, including me, and building a website using Squarespace couldn't be easier. They have a bunch of really awesome templates which are an absolute doddle to customize and modify to get them looking exactly as you want them. Plus, there's a bunch of built-in analytics, SEO tools, online stores, blogs, and now even scheduling tools, meaning I can keep everything in one place which makes my whole life way, way easier. So if you fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply head over to squarespace.com right now to start your free trial. When you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech and use the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Easy as that. Next up, we've got improved performance for night vision, glitch, TV, and other effects. Now, some of those are limited to the studio version, but the main takeaway from this is a lot of the fusion effects on the edit page are now much, much quicker. Of course, your experience may vary a little bit depending on what hardware you're on, but for me, my PC, I've noticed a massive difference. Titles are just much, much quicker. They don't have to take as long to render. Transitions, much smoother, and some of the built-in effects just work in real time, whereas before, they were far chuggier than they should have been. And those performance increases aren't just limited to fusion effects. They have improved project performance, especially when dealing with large projects. I haven't really noticed this much per se, but it's good that they've made some improvements there as well. But what about edit page effects within the free version of DaVinci Resolve 18? Well, actually, there's only really one new one, and that's the fast noise effect. I have actually made a whole video about the fast noise effect. If you wanna go check that out, it's linked up here somewhere. But essentially, what it allows you to do is to apply some quite cool effects, like smoke, fog, still water, running river, or a heat haze effect, as you're seeing right now. And it's actually really fun to have a play with. You can use it to create some really funky titles, as well as messing around by adding motion to still images. There's lots of cool stuff that you can do with it. To find it, open up your effects library, click on open effects, scroll right down until you get to the texture area, and then you've got your fast noise effect. You can just apply that onto whatever you want. Give it a click. In the inspector effects, you've got a preset. You can just change this. So let's go with water surface. And if I hit play, you can see I've got this water surface effect going on. You can have a play with all of the controls in here to get it looking exactly as you want it. So honestly, just experiment with it, have some fun with it. Fusion, there's not really much here, mostly the performance improvements and that sort of thing. But there is one change to the way that Fusion works, which I think is worth mentioning. And that's how you copy compositions, you copy effects from one clip to another. Previously, what you had to do was use your middle mouse button, which a lot of people complained about if they're using a modern mouse, maybe like an Apple mouse, it didn't have a middle mouse button. So now they've changed it. 
Annoyingly, they've actually removed the functionality to use the middle mouse, and now it's entirely different. I would have liked them to keep the middle mouse option as well, but there you go. So now, how do you do it? So instead now, make sure you've got your clips open by clicking on clips, top left-hand corner here, so I can see my clips down the bottom. This clip here has got this transform node applied. If I want to copy this to another clip or multiple different clips, I can just highlight the ones that I want. So I've got all three of these selected. That was just by clicking and holding control. Now, if I right click on the one that has the effect already applied, there's an option to apply composition. It'll ask me if I want to overwrite, I do. And that's gonna copy that transform node or whatever nodes were applied to that original clip to all of the other ones which I had selected. Color page, nothing really new to report within here, not within the free version anyway. The only thing that's kind of worth mentioning is that that fast noise effect from the edit page is also available from the effects library on the color page. In terms of Fairlight, for those interested, there's actually a bunch of improvements, but I don't know enough about Fairlight to be able to talk you through them. So instead, check out this video by Jason. I've linked it down below. He talks about all of the new DaVinci Resolve 18 Fairlight updates, everything you need to know in one handy video. So go check that out. And last but not least, the Deliver page. And again, there's actually some goodies in here which have kind of been overlooked and are definitely worth mentioning. And the first one, there's a new 1440p YouTube preset. On the Deliver page, from the render settings over here, scroll over until you see the YouTube icon, click the drop down, and now there's 720, 1080, 1440, and 2160. On a similar note, the support for video uploads to internet accounts when using custom presets. So for a while now, you've been able to upload videos once they've been rendered directly to YouTube from within DaVinci Resolve. But previously, you had to always use those YouTube presets. Now you have the option to upload to YouTube using whatever settings you want. So if I just scroll over and select Custom Export, I've got all of my usual controls within here. I can set those to whatever I need them to be. And then if I scroll down, I've got this YouTube settings. I can expand that, and then I can tick Upload directly to YouTube. Give it a title, description, all that other stuff, add to the render queue, the video will be rendered and then automatically uploaded directly to YouTube. Now, quick tip, if you don't see this YouTube settings, all you need to do, click on DaVinci Resolve top left, go to Preferences, System at the top, Internet Accounts, and then just make sure that you're logged in to your YouTube account here. If you want to do the same for Vimeo, Twitter, Dropbox, you just make sure you're logged into whatever service you need. And last but not least, you've got the ability to render individual clips with timeline effects. This is actually quite a big one, and I've not seen anyone talk about it just yet. So if you didn't know, there's an option to render individual clips within DaVinci Resolve, which means rather than rendering your entire timeline as one video, it'll take all the little bits from your timeline and render them out individually. It can be quite a handy way of just transcoding your footage from one codec to another, that sort of thing. But previously, they were a little bit limited because they wouldn't pull through any timeline effects. So anything you've applied via adjustment clip would be completely ignored and any speed changes wouldn't pull through either. But now, all of that has changed. So if we take this example here, I've got this clip which has an adjustment clip above it which simply just zooms it in. And then I've got this second clip which has been sped up. So I'm gonna hop over to the Deliver tab. I've got a custom export. At the top here, you can see Render, Single Clip. I'm gonna change that to Individual Clips. And now this is the new option, Render Timeline Effects. So by default, I'm just gonna add to the render queue and render these out without applying the timeline effects. And we'll end up with three files. The first one is the adjustment clip. That will just be completely blank. The second one is that first clip, but it won't have that zoom applied. And the third one will be the second clip, but it will be playing at normal speed. Now what we're gonna do, exactly the same, but we're gonna enable our timeline effects add to the render queue and render these three out instead. Now this time we've just got two video clips. The first one is the first clip, but obviously this time we now have our adjustment clip applied, so we're all zoomed in. And then the second one has a speed change applied as well. And having that timeline effects option just makes these individual clips way more useful. Now for the last point, I just wanna talk really quickly about stability. I can't guarantee this is the same for everyone, but for my experience of using DaVinci Resolve 18, it's been really, really stable. The first few betas were a little bit choppy, one and two especially, but from about three or four, it started to become really, really stable. And I think since then, my experience with DaVinci Resolve 18 has been my most stable experience with DaVinci Resolve I've ever had. 
A lot of the silly, annoying bugs seem to be ironed out and it's just running really, really well. So there you go. That's everything that I think is worth mentioning in the free version of DaVinci Resolve 18.